Today we light all the candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has meaning. The first candle is hope. The second candle is peace. The third candle is joy. The fourth candle is love. The center candle is the Christ candle. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hope, peace, joy, and love. Four candles, four promises, continually offered to us by God, and all of them manifest in this one we light tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ, we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment and community, and the love that encompasses all in our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to his world. In Christ, we find light and life, and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. O God of hope, peace, joy, and love, as Mary and Joseph welcomed you into the world, now help us welcome you into our lives. Give us courage to hope, strength to seek peace, fill our spirits with joy and our hearts with love. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, amen.
prayer. Eternal God, we rejoice in God's steadfast presence in our lives and in God's unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, growing through childhood into an, an adult ministry, in all his manifesting the peace, love, and justice of God, his voice undimmed by the centuries, his call and his promises as clear to us as it was to his disciples so long ago. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night in our hearts, our minds, our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Amen. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with them sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? Whom shepherds, God, and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, compassion, king to all. King of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise a song on high. The virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy for Christ is born. The babe, the son of Mary. Whom shepherds, God, and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary.
Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Our reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. In those days Mary set out and went to with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb wept for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Luke 2, verse 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea and to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and to who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
So last week, Lisa, our office manager, her son, Preston, uh, came in to work with her one morning. They had a party to go to uh, partway through the morning, and so Preston uh, was brimming with excitement while he was here with us. And he kept telling me, I'm going to Jesus' birthday party. Uh, he did tell me very clearly that only he and his mom were invited, and I wasn't allowed to go. Uh, but I really couldn't help but take joy in his joy over going to Jesus' birthday party. Sometimes in the midst of all of our traditions, I don't actually realize that central to this story is a birth. I know it seems kind of silly, and especially considering that I'm a pastor and I share this story a lot, uh, I still doesn't always connect in my mind that Jesus came into the world on Christmas. And how did he come into the world? The same way everybody else does, through birth. It's so natural. It's so natural that every person on the planet has been birthed. We all came into this world through this process, and yet it seems so strange to me that God would enter the world in this way. Because God is not limited in anything, and yet our God chose to show up in a vulnerable way. That's how he chose to enter the world. You know, births are difficult. They're messy and they're painful. People don't always survive the birthing process. And, and even when you do, you don't really come out the same afterward. And yet, God embraced this completely natural and ordinary way to show up in the world. In fact, God made it even more ordinary by having the birth happen when no one was looking. You see, Mary didn't give birth in a hospital or surrounded by her family. Her cousin Elizabeth, who had just given birth a few months before, wasn't there to guide her through the process or to hold her hand. Mary didn't have the women of the village and their expertise to make sure that the baby and that she would be okay. She just had Joseph and some animals. She was away from her home away from her community, away from her support when the time came for her to give birth to the child. You know, every couple is anxious to meet their unborn child. My husband and I were very anxious to meet our firstborn because we didn't know if we were going to be meeting a boy or a girl. And leading up to my due date, my body was changing rapidly. You can see a picture here uh, where you can see how <laughs> large my belly was. Uh, I was retaining fluids in such a way that it was really uncomfortable for me to stand or to wear shoes. Uh, by the end of my pregnancy, I was even on bed rest. I was very ready to meet that little one that had been growing inside of me. I was very ready to have this child not be kicking me in my vital organs or sitting on my bladder. I was ready to, for my body to be my own again and to see that little face that I had spent months imagining. I imagine that the anticipation of Mary and Joseph to meet the child she was carrying was even greater than my own. I imagine Mary was also ready to be done being pregnant, especially after having to travel from Galilee to Bethlehem. That's not a quick journey in those days. And I'm sure that she ached and that she was tired and she was hungry and she was emotional. But more than that, these two knew that their child was special. This child was created through divine intervention. This child would be called the son of God. This child would change their lives, not just by becoming parents, but because this child came to save the world. I am sure that they were anxious to meet him, to look into his face and search for that glimmer of the divine within him. And then while they are on a trip away from it all, that's when Mary goes into labor. And I wonder if they had a moment of wondering about the timing. Why God? Why would you choose 
now to come. We're not even staying in someone's house. The only person that is with me is Joseph, and he doesn't know what to do, and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not ready for this. I mean, that's what I imagine Mary thinking. And then that moment comes. The moment that they had spent months waiting for. The moment where they look into the face of their child. If you ever are a parent, do you remember the first time that you saw your child? I have some photos of the first time that I saw my children. The first here is Ben. I was actually one of the last people in the room to see him after he was born. But they brought him over. And they laid him on my chest, and I called him by his name, spoken to him for the first time. And I felt his warm body nestle into my chest, and I just melted in love. And I didn't think it was possible to love someone so much. And when I got pregnant for the second time, I was worried that I wouldn't love this child as much as the first. But it happened again with Ethan They brought him over and seeing his face, I loved him more than I ever thought possible. That night, Mary saw her child for the first time. This baby that had been within her for months was now in front of her, in her arms. And this was her baby. And yet he was so much more than that. He was hers in a way that babies only belong to their mothers, but this baby was different. You see, every parent hopes and dreams for their child and what they will grow up to be like. Mary and Joseph knew, looking at this little baby, that his destiny was beyond what either of them could hope or dream for. But in that moment, in that one moment, he was theirs. He was their son. That is until a knock came on the door and some shepherds tumbled into the room and they began sharing this incredible story about how these angels had appeared to them while they were out in the field with the sheep and that the angels had told them where to go to find this baby and that this baby would bring peace to the world. And the angels directed them here to this child. And Mary and Joseph were reminded that this baby that she had just birthed didn't belong to just them. He belonged to all of us. This child wasn't just here for their benefit and for their family, but for us all. The shepherds would only be the first to witness the miraculous nature of Jesus, for there would come a time when his divine nature would show itself and he would leave the comfort of his home to preach and to heal and to redeem. All of that would come in time. But for now, Mary and Joseph tended to the infant who was fussing in her arms, dependent upon them to keep him alive, to keep him fed and clothed, to keep him safe from harm's way when Herod would come searching for him, to keep him trained in the scriptures and to learn the family trait. You see, God had entrusted these two with raising the Son of God, of guiding Jesus and how to live in the world so that Jesus could ultimately save it. This young girl and this carpenter boy would begin their greatest journey of faith on this Christmas night. You see, they had already come so far. Mary had already agreed to have the child, and she trusted that God was making the right decision in choosing her. Joseph had already made the decision to believe and trust in Mary and take her as his wife, even though she was pregnant as a virgin. But the road ahead of them would demand more. They would become refugees in Egypt, They would return and raise their family in Nazareth, which is not the most well-respected place. Mary would watch as her son would leave to travel the countryside as an itinerant preacher. She would be there when he got arrested and crucified by the Roman government. And she would know of his resurrection. But on this night, none of that has come to pass. 
Instead, God makes his grand entrance into the world, landing into the arms of Mary. And he will spend the night sleeping and feeding in those arms. Vulnerable, fragile, beautiful. And as Mary looks into that face, she knows that all she has ever known will fade into comparison to caring for this child. And she contemplates all the miracles that have already taken place, the angels that had visited, the angels appearing to the shepherds, Elizabeth's miraculous birth, the fact that she was pregnant and holding a child at all. And she treasures all of these things in her heart, not knowing what they all entail, but knowing enough to know that God has given her a part of the greatest story. But we must remember, this isn't just the story. This is real. Mary really did give birth to Jesus that night so long ago, and that child that she cradled in her arms is the same one that we call Lord and Emmanuel. It is the same Jesus that we know as the Son of God. It is the same Jesus that we sing about and pray in his name. It is the same Jesus that calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to feed the hungry and to clothe the naked and to eat with sinners. It is the same Jesus that we have encountered in our own lives. It is the same Jesus that changed us. While God had planned for this night for centuries, as the prophets foretold, this was the beginning of something new. And the only reason that we celebrate this night is because of who Jesus became. All the pieces of his divine nature and his calling were present within him in his birth, but Jesus still had to grow into the Savior. And Jesus became the light and salvation of the world. And hopefully, when I say that, it's not just some grand statement, but it's something that you know to be true in your own life. The good news of the Christmas story is that when God came into the world to save the world, it included you. The good news of the Christmas story is that God came to live a human life to redeem our lives and to give us purpose and the possibility of living a life honoring to God and a life that is fulfilling to us. Not a life that is enslaved to sin or corruption or oppression, but a life that is free, free to bless, free to work for justice, and free to offer love and grace. You know, God knows what it's like to be human because of this night so long ago. God knows what it's like to have hardships and to be dependent on others for food, clothing, and shelter. God understands the needs that you have, including the need for connection, for friendship, for love, for affection. God in Jesus felt all those things. And needed all of those things as well. So this Christmas, let us rejoice in a God who understands. A God who was willing to come to earth. God with us, Emmanuel. Let us rejoice in a God who loves us so much that God made a way for us to be together with him. Let us rejoice that a Savior has arrived. And let us remember But this is only the beginning of the story. It is a story that continues on. And it continues on with you and me. So as Christmas continues, let us be a part of this story. Let us be a part of God on earth. Let us be the hands and feet of Christ to those around us. Let us offer hope, love, and life to those who need it most. And maybe, just maybe, you are the one who needs it most. But let us not forget to share the love that we have been shown in a God who sent his son into the world on this night. Amen.
Christmas. Mm-hmm.